Welcome to Conscious Profits Unfiltered. This is your host, Sebastian Nam. What up, fam? Today I had an Arno St. Paul, an award winning serial software philanthropist, author in finance, and social impact entrepreneur for over 20 years. He has raised millions of dollars from angels, VCs, and family offices in Europe and in the US. He has also built channel partnerships with global brands, created and exited companies, learning what works and what doesn't. Arno is passionate about two specific topics, conscious capitalism and conscious leadership, as he mentors CEOs to become conscious and enlightened leaders. As an expert on blockchain, social impact, and heartful leadership, he is often invited to keynote at global conferences. As you can tell from this intro, I was super excited to talk shop with him. It was such a pleasure to have Arno on the show, and I can't wait for you to listen in. Enjoy the show. Arno, welcome to the show. Hello. Thank you, Sebastian. So happy to be here. Wonderful to have you. Uh, not going to lie to our audience, we just had some fun technical difficulties, so we had to restart the, the, the show here. So Arno, it's a pleasure having you and uh, you're kind of cheating now because you know my first question because I already asked you. <laughs> we, so let's see how you respond this time. Arno, when was your last oh shit moment? Well, it was a few minutes ago when you asked me the question. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that was something I did, I wouldn't expect, number one, so congratulations. And second, definitely that kind of question would put me totally off the field or left field or something like that. Yeah. I don't know the right expression. And therefore, I said, oh, shit, <laughs> what do I do there? Well, here we are, I have the answer. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, Arno, we are both passionate for conscious capitalism, and we're going to be talking about conscious business and conscious leadership and um but frankly i find that at least for myself and and a lot of people in the space there was a time where we lived life a, more unconsciously in the past and something that maybe took us towards this path can you share a little bit about how that may have represented for you in a time when maybe you were living life more unconsciously yeah i think you know, I wouldn't dare to say that I have been conscious of my life. I, it has been a journey, and on that journey, we acquire gradually a little bit more pieces of consciousness, right? It's, it's a bit of remembering ourselves. And through the challenges and situations of life and, you know, every single moment, it's an opportunity for each of us to decide whether we want to be more conscious or or continue the same pattern on autopilot right so uh, th that's the thing day in day out in the, if i look at my past between quotes well there are decisions i took in these moments with which, which i believed which were conscious but not really, because there were still some autopilot things happening. Mm -hmm. And uh, whether it is from a business standpoint or, you know, privately with, with my wife uh, at that moment. So it's, it's a process. And uh, the beauty of that process is that we know we can surrender to it because if we choose that idea of becoming more and more conscious, we're just opening up to more of that right so there is no other way meaning that yeah. my future self will always see me as less conscious than what i may become down the road unless i choose another route which is unlikely in my case yeah yeah and it makes me think about the fact that when we even put the word conscious in front of something like business conscious business right that's typically has a very positive you know, it, it tends to be very positive, right? So, but really, if I think about it, really conscious just means being conscious, being aware of something, right? So being conscious of something, you can be conscious and not having be a positive thing. It could be consciously, you know, uh, negative too, right? You can, that would be like a masochism in some way, because if you are conscious, therefore you understand the consequences of, you know, your thoughts, your emotions, your actions. And if you consciously are negative, uh, sure. But then you know what are the consequences, you're going to pay for them. And that 
is yeah masochism that's the name <laughs> interesting i'm just thinking about somebody who's you know because i was just thinking conscious business conscious capitalism we're going to be talking about that right but uh somebody could have a a, a a consciously unconscious business. Somebody could be like, I am here just to make profits and I don't care about anybody else. And this is my conscious decision. That's all I care about. That could be and something that's to great. That's yeah. Amazing. You know, be my guest, of course. Yeah. And then maybe at some point he or she will arise from that and decide, well, that's I, I've done that game. Now I'm on to another game, which is to do impact or whatever. Correct. Of course. Correct. Yeah. I mean, we clearly, you and I both and then a lot of people in the space as well believe that conscious business is a way to change the world in, in a great positive manner because you know when we scale a business if that business has impact we can scale impact and that will cause a true change in the world so is it to change the world or change ourselves in the process right and that's that's the question i'm asking to change makers and conscious leaders in general is we know as we are conscious leaders, that there is no change we can bring to the world if we don't change ourselves first. Correct. And therefore, conscious capitalism and conscious business, etc., is first and foremost uh, a, a starting point from which the leader is choosing to change himself, to open himself to more, so that he can witness the change he is looking to for the world in general. Absolutely. Um, and so that's, uh, yeah, 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 absolutely. We have to change ourselves first. Otherwise we would be in a state of uh, dissonance and, uh, you know, exactly. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, absolutely. And, and I can even attest to that myself of, you know, certain uh, times in my life where I had all of these, ideas about consciousness and I was being conscious in many aspects of my life but then there was a big chunk where I was living it very unconsciously and there was that was causing internal dissonance and mm -hmm. uh you know and and it was expressed in various forms for me physically and emotionally and, and realized that that was the problem that that I was doing this and then I was doing that and it wasn't united you know and that's what yeah, uh, you know, was a big you know catalyst for me to change and, and sort of you know have that more integrated in my life as you say it's all about alignment and coherence so mm -hmm. you 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 cannot pursue let's say pure profits on one side and then at the same time uh, stating that you are you know for good and for the impact yeah. of the world etc there's incoherence you can do it, right? It's not an issue. And nobody is here to judge at all. However, at some point, there's an imbalance that makes it that something will break. It's normal. That's how it works. So, yeah, exactly. Different. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Our journey, exactly. anyway. Yeah. Arno, you wrote a book called The Human Project. And something that you say is uh, you thought being an angel was easy. Uh, think again. So, what, what does that mean? Well, uh, it, it means. Basically, I mean, that, that book that I wrote in 2011, which is a short fiction book uh, that explores that idea of the, the angel that is an infinite and eternal being, right? The way we picture him or her. It's not, it's undifferentiated. Anyway, so uh, that angel or our becoming human, they enter into a little tiny box, we call it the human experience, from that eternality and that, that infinity that we're talking about into that little thing. So it has some challenges, right? And uh, so the, it was a visit from that idea of the self, of the higher self, of the infinite self, of God, or whatever you want to call it, and look at it, uh, look at the human experience from that angle. And it's one of the basis of my heartful method that uh, is really exploring that idea between the I, which is the human experience, and the self, which is part of ourselves as well, which is that divine experience, if you want to, to label it that way. Mm. Super interesting. And uh, Arno, so do you, do you feel that we are actually angels and if not do you feel that we have angels around us do, do you feel that we have spirit guides actually in this realm around us that are guiding us yes and no <laughs> uh, 
yes, you know, we, the moment we are baptizing something, we're putting a label on something, it exists. Mm -hmm. There's no reason why not, right? Because this experience we're having now is consciousness that that consciousness in a with a big c right which is infinite and eternal is taking shape to provide me with this experience with this drawing that i see in, in the back of your of your chair my our conversation here with beautiful love is the answer and uh, and so consciousness is providing us with that experience a bit like in matrix right <laughs> the movie and also all the different layers that are happening in that uh, moment in that experience meaning not only just my thoughts and my emotions and the, the brilliant conversation we're having now but also all the different energies that are not necessarily incarnated meaning that i can touch them but are also there because again consciousness is infinite right so there is no border that can you know it's everything so there in this moment, there are many, many different energies that I can label as uh, angels, etc. But they are also a reflection of me, mm. because I am conscious, you are conscious. And that consciousness that I am part of is also part of me. So in other words, we are angels too. Mm. And one of the beautiful journeys we have is to accept at last that we are all that remember that we are these angels that we are this uh, divine experience that we are that pure unconditional love that is the very core of our essence mm. and that's the journey we have as individuals as conscious leaders as conscious businesses etc et yeah before going to conscious business, it just made me think about, uh, I'm wondering if once you accept that more fully and you see yourself as all of that, does that make you less afraid of death? Uh, well, the, 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 the aspect of me that is afraid of death, right, is the I that feels, that identifies to this human vessel, right, or this mm -hmm. physical body. <clears throat> Obviously, as that identification disappears, that fear also subsumes mm. itself, right? Because I am more and more and more in presence of myself with a big S, and I, I know that this is just a step, right? That lifetime is just a step. So yeah. it, uh, it becomes less important. Still yeah. there, I'm sure, but still a bit less important. Sure. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, I love the concept of being spiritual, Arno. Uh, how do you find, you talk about spiritual entrepreneurship. And so how do you see business as spiritual? So part of the, the core understanding of how life works from my standpoint and the one that I share with the CEOs I work with, and that it, helps them on their journey is that so i have an equation <laughs> which is r equal f of i so f with parenthesis and i in the middle right and that means reality is a function of i so i defines what happens in reality in so many different ways we can dive deeper into that later mm -hmm. and that is key to understand how we, we live our lives and also our business, which is part of our lives, by the way, it's part of our experiences. So in other words, each step I'm making every single moment business-wise to just to limit our conversation to that is a way for I to express itself, know itself, understand itself, accept itself, love itself. Mm. So in other words, any challenge I may encounter in my business, any things that flow in my business is a way for, to help myself to shift to a, new, a higher perception of myself and express myself in a new way. 
right? So in other words, if I take a, a, a musical metaphor, any challenge, the, the moment I become more conscious about it, I accept myself, I surrender to it, etc. I open up to a quantum leap to get to a new octave of myself. And there I create my symphony about this and this and that from a new place, from a new vibration level. And therefore more potentials are open. Therefore I trust the world more. I love more, et cetera, et cetera. And comes more serendipities. And then we get into a beautiful world of pronoia. Do you know that word? No, please tell me and share it. Okay. With <laughs> so pronoia is a, the definition of pronoia, and we're not going to make a game about it, but I have a little game around that if we have time. But basically, it states the concept that the world is here to love and support. Okay. Instead of paranoia, which is its antonym, that states that the world is always, anything out of my control is gonna go bad one way or another, mm -hmm. okay? And so the idea of pronoia is I is living in a world that is there to love him, to support him, to nurture him, to provide to him, et cetera, with ease, without effort, which is quite a revolutionary concept, more so in the business world because business world thinks from scarcity from from a place of struggle of hustle etc well the thing is if we allow it if we accept it and it's a it's it's a journey right to get there yeah uh, we can live in a world where everything <laughs> conspires for our good and therefore, for the good of the vision of what, what we may have related to the impact we want to do and have, right? Or the legacy we want to provide. I love that, Arno. Uh, I'm a big fan of that. So let me play a little bit of devil's advocate. And then if somebody says, um, okay, well, what if I am born in a tiny, very, very poor stricken town of India with no opportunities in uh, maybe in an an abusive family or, or, you know, environment or something like that. How, how am I as that little kid? And this is obviously a very tough situation, but how do I think about, how do I believe in pranoia? So the journey may be long in some ways. That, that pranoia happens the moment we choose to become more conscious, right? Which is the purpose of this conversation. And we, we become aware of what is our tone, our, our note, right? The one that is so unique to us, to I, right? That it is the very reason why I is born. So Sebastian came to this earth to have a certain way that is unique all over the world, all over the times. It's that Sebastian that the world needs with his pure magic that he is within him. And this applies to anyone on the planet, whatever the circumstances. So when we become aware of that music that is inside ourselves, and we have to abstract ourselves from all the noises and all these negative aspects between quotes that are actually the contrast that allow me to understand what is that music of mine. Once I'm becoming aware of that, then I can start to strengthen, right? My attention to that music, to, to nurture it as well. And we're talking about what's happening inside, not the outside world. And by doing so, the world starts to change and starts to come to want to resonate with yeah. that music. So it's like a guitar, you... you, you pinch one string the other guitar will do the same it's resonance it's the property of resonance so that's how it works so the more we nurture that tone of ourselves the more the world res starts resonating with it and bring in more and more of itself 
Yeah. And that applies. So obviously within the context that you just mentioned, we're not talking about changing the whole world, maybe. Although I've, I've known kids and, and young adults that have gone from these places and became amazing uh, speakers, just to take that example. But anyway, that little village, uh, that young boy in a little village will have probably a small music at first, but still big within his context, right? And then gradually it can grow. We don't know. We cannot presume about that. Yeah. At the end of the day, it could, somebody could just be born into a more challenging uh, outside world. But at the end of the day, like you just said, it's context as well. And yes. you know, the, the context is, you know, the growth within a certain context of somebody could be huge and major uh, because of the situation they were in. And that's already a huge win, quote unquote, win uh, for, for that person and how that can change their life and their future family, too. Yes. So. And, and, you know, for to that person that would be listening, potentially, it's always happened one step at a time. So yeah. we have to really narrow ourselves down to the next step and, and forget about the rest. Yeah. And it feels very, very small, but then it's the only way. Sure. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Arno, what's the heartful method? Oh, the heartful method. So it's a method that came together in the past 30 years along my own journey. As an entrepreneur, you know, I worked in finance and uh, creating uh, companies in, in the tech world in Europe and the US. And basically, it came as charts. So today, we have a collection of uh, 12 sessions, 160 charts that helps a leader to live their life through their heart. So shift from a mind-driven scarcity-driven life to a heart-driven um, um, where more peace, more flow, more balance is invited to the, to the mix of her, him, her, his or her daily life. <laughs> I get it. Uh, and, uh, and so it's quite a magical transformation and it's going from paranoia to pronoia also because we're all a bit paranoidal in one way or another, let's face it. And uh, more so when we're an autopilot. So, and it helps the person to become more conscious and open up to that idea of becoming present to the self instead of uh, just I, right? Hey guys, I just want to remind you, if you want to find more content like this, you can visit SebastianNaum.com. That's Sebastian, N-A-U-M.com. You can also get a ton of other marketing resources for myself and my agencies, ranging from SEO to social media, influencer marketing, branding, web development, and more. Again, that's SebastianNaum.com. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the show. So many, many different types of transformations. And then sometimes some CEOs ask me to keep as an advisor of the company so that we can grow the company faster and uh, because we're it's the same method so while we're going through the heartful method we start to learn also how life is talking to us because every single situation we're going through whether they are crisis or just you know day-to-day -day normal life is actually a language that we can use to learn about ourselves and accept ourselves further. So I work with CEOs to, uh, so the, the way I offer the Heartful Method is a coaching with, uh, first we have like 30 minutes going through the slides and then we talk for about an hour about the different challenges of the week, etc. And always the different incidents that happen throughout the week are linked together and are expressing one aspect that needs to be expressed now and that needs to be looked at and transformed and that's what we do and once we do that automatically the potentials are open and the person releases all these aspects and in the reality of the business the circumstances have disappeared so which is it's such an interesting concept you look at this week or month or whatever, right? And then most of the challenges, even though from the outside, they can be seen completely business related. 
after you go through the process, there's always something else there. And when when you can essentially, you know, go through the heart method and and be more in, in, in alignment, right, with yourself and yes, consciously, exactly. these business things start to fall into place. Yes, yes, totally. And the, the behavior of the individual will change. The, uh, um, the contracts will start to be signed, et cetera. Yeah. It's, ma- it's not magical. It's mathematical. It's, <laughs> it's instantaneous. And uh, it's interesting because you could have e- events that, are, that seem totally unrelated. Yeah. But they are totally related to a topic that the CEO is going through at that moment. I love that. Always. I- I love that you said it's magical. Actually, no, it's ma- it's mathematical. Uh, that is so cool because I always see it as you know in my life as as magic too in business. As as you said, the more you know um, align in alignment I've ever been, and and even the energy in which I send out contracts and things like that, as that's shifted, it's like it's so many more opportunities and signatures coming through. It's as simple as that. It's like. Wow, it's it's a it's it's a magical mathematical formula. I guess <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I love it. That's wonderful. That's really cool, uh, Arno. What is the spirit? The new spiritual masculine. I love this subject. Tell me a little bit more about this. Ooh, that's interesting. Also, um, the spiritual masculine. The spiritual masculine is a masculine that includes or or accept and incorporates and embraces that's the word i was looking for his feminine side Mm. so the masculine so i have in my framework there is a a metaphor i'm using to understand a bit better what is the masculine what is the feminine energy i'm talking about not the the, not the embodiment but just the energy right Uh, so our world is made on a duality which is the masculine energy and the feminine energy. And yeah. the, the metaphor I'm using is the, the feminine energy is like a cloud. It doesn't have any center. It's without any shape. And it always reflects the outside, always looking at the outside. And it's stasis. It's pure beingness as well. On the other hand, the the masculine energy is movement. It's an arrow, can only go one way or another. It's super binary, right? And, but it's very focused as well. And our world, our reality, this embodiment is made of these two energies. And it's, so as you understood, the arrow is about doing this, right? Which is the, other, the, the opposite pole to the beingness. And so it's only by being both together, by embodying both, and more so a conscious leader. It's part, you know, part of the listening will come from the feminine, a part of the doing will come from the masculine. Mm. So and hence that journey from the mind to the heart, it's also exactly the same thing. The mind is a masculine principle, which is super linear, super segregating, etc. Well, the heart is more embracing, more loving, etc. So we need to have both in our hand as a spiritual masculine so that we can actually accelerate our creation, right? So because if I am at the tip of my arrow, I totally lost connection with the foundation of me, which is that feminine, right? And therefore, it's very um, a fragile whatever I'm going to create. If I am here at the, at the bottom, at the junction between the, the, the cloud and the arrow, we're strong and we're going fast and we, it happens uh, you know, from all the places together. It's, it's holistic way. So that's how I would define the spiritual masculine. I can stay for hours on that topic, but I don't want to impose too much either. <laughs> Love that. That's a beautiful topic. Do you speak about that in your book, um, I? Not, no. The, my book, I, is 66 paths to harmony. So mm-hmm. I, I'm keen into looking at experience. It's about sharing experience more than acquiring knowledge. 
Mm. So if you want to work with me, it's more about helping you to shift things within your own experience than you acquiring this and that knowledge, etc. And so the I, which is my second book, is 66 poems that invite you to have the experience of I from different angles. So mm. not only from the I angle and the self angle, but related to wisdom, to trust, to faith, to surrender, but also the journey of I towards itself, et cetera, et cetera. So it's different ways that you can read, be present to them, to these words, and help you to feel what it would look like for you. What does that mean for you? Mm. And maybe once you've read one poem, you can actually acquire that property that has been described in that in that book and take your decisions from there it's a bit like reading the bhagavad gita it has many different layers as well i love uh, that well I, I for that matter yeah yeah admittedly i you know i have i don't know didn't know about it and so i'm very excited to to read it actually that sounds beautiful it sounds like um it could be just one poem could be a good amount to digest uh, you know, yes. right? Just one. Yes. So uh, Just I'm one. Very, very, very much looking forward to that. Um, totally shift topics here and talk a little bit about blockchain, you know, something that's been around for a while now created by Satoshi for the use of Bitcoin. And, um, you know, it, it's it's incredible technology that helps with security and in ways of recording things digitally, yeah, if we want to put it in very sort of layman terms. When do you see it's already been adopted by major, major players? When do you see this being truly blockchain being truly mainstream? And how do you see, you know, cryptocurrencies being mainstream? And I know those are totally different questions, but people really tie those together. But because blockchain technology is used for cryptocurrencies and now they are becoming more mainstream. So I'd love to, to hear your opinion on that as being a, a fan and somebody who follows a lot of things in regarding to that yeah, so I, I i don't know if you're aware but i am i uh, created i founded a project called give nation which is a, a cryptocurrency for children for them to become philanthropists and practice sustainable financial literacy i my this idea there is exactly the same as what i'm doing with heartful method is to help the next generation to open their heart and use in this case money as a medium to have an impact in the world and experience more and more and more empathy, compassion, and altruism in their life. So how does that relate to your question? Uh, my belief is that a systemic change from the angle that you're mentioning can happen in only two ways. One is adoption by the masses, and that's why I'm focusing on the, on the young generation of the tools that we are working on, you know, and that where we still have a lot of UI UX issues to solve, but it, it is happening and it will, it will come more and more. But it is also about embedding the blockchain principles into the economy, mm -hmm. right? So more in a B2B or through banks, et cetera, that are, but will be using gradually, but more and more, the infrastructure the, the, the blockchain infrastructure that exists in the ecosystem without necessarily changing the tools that the consumer sees or or the companies for that matter right. but are still using them right mm -hmm. and by that combination of both and we're obviously there's a third as, uh, component which are the governments which are doing the same thing as, as the banks by that by these two approaches we can for sure uh, see that in the next 10, 20 years, uh, 20, yeah, 20, 20 years, let's say, uh, blockchain will become a, or the blockchain technologies will become a core component of the society the way we know it from a, a digital standpoint, for sure. Yeah. yeah, completely agreed there. And do you see, do you see a currency like Bitcoin becoming more and more mainstream? Or do you actually see that as just something that 
was needed to introduce what was really important, which was maybe the technology behind it, such as blockchain. Uh, and then that just sort of becomes a, like a, di a dinosaur thing and just stays behind. I like your second interpretation. I would like to add something else on that. I mean, what we have seen, and this is a trend that is unlikely to change, is that you know, the blockchain world is a block is a world of innovation, constant innovation. So the likelihood of having one currency that takes them all, Bitcoin or or any any else, any other, is unlikely. And the same way that in this world uh, we have many currencies, Correct. one for each state, right? So my take is we're gonna have we're going anyway. From a societal standpoint, we're going after we're going towards more and more diversity. In any in any aspect you look at in society, it is more about diversity and, and less about unicity from yeah. that standpoint. But that diversity creates unicity at some point. We'll get there down the road. Mm. So Bitcoin becoming the, the currency of the world, unlikely from my little it could just remain as an asset like gold is. That's what I was going right. after. Yes, that was my mm. the second thing I was going to say, indeed, most likely. And, you know, as being the mother currency of the digital currency world, that a digital era, digital currency era that, uh, that started a few years back. They will yeah. look at it from the 100 years, in 100 years. Well, we won't, but, you know, yeah. our descendants. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, true, true. Um, Arno, um, before I let you go, I, I like to ask, what do you find are the two most important traits? If you just had to choose two traits that a conscious leader must embody. Hmm. How do you define traits? So it's it could be uh, really up to your interpretation, but if you... That, that, that I think the, the challenging part is narrowing it down to just two things. That's challenging enough. Um, and those two things could be a, a one word, you know, trait such as, you know, empathy, yeah, but it could also just be something much more complex from a concept, conceptual standpoint. Trust and love. Is that trust in the self, the universe, others? All of the above. <laughs> so it's, about, it's, yeah. it's it's so let me explain it a bit further to unpack it a little bit why i chose these hmm. uh, trust because that's not what society brings us to and this is something that seems to be totally counterintuitive and a leader a conscious leader that is not trusting from my understanding is not yet ready to be conscious a, what I mean by that is, if I am to become aware of myself, if I am to take steps towards changing the world, etc., in a more conscious way, not repeating the same patterns, right? The one that are, I have acquired throughout my life. And I'm still in that idea that some things somehow is going to happen or, or, or jeopardize what I'm doing, etc. Then I am not on that journey towards my core vision. Mm -hmm. There is something amiss there. So there is a need of accepting and embracing myself so that I can still trust a bit further because that's the path towards the vision that I have. Okay. Behind trust is love. I'm not talking about love in relationship, obviously, that's part of it, right? But as a change maker, as a conscious leader, if I'm not loving what I do to start with, that's a bit of an issue. If I am not loving the one that is doing it, aka me, that's a bigger issue. Yeah. So, Finding that place where I can experience unconditional love to what is in this moment, including me, <laughs> uh, 
that is the challenge that we may or may not accept. I love that. That's beautiful. That's beautiful, beautiful. I know you guys do uh, workshops, uh, one-on-ones. You offer several things. And how can people get a hold of you to learn more about these offerings? Super happy to talk with anybody. And more importantly, there are you know free stuff there as well. So happy to help as many people as we can to open their heart to themselves. Uh, you can go on tapuat.com, T-A-P-U-A-T.com slash harmony, where you can get three ways to find harmony within. Uh, it's a little excer- excerpt and highlight of a workshop I gave. And uh, yeah, happy to have a conversation. Love that. Love that. Well, Arno, I just want to acknowledge you and thank you again for being on and acknowledge thank you for you. being truly a conscious leader. So uh, please uh, keep being you and and inspiring others. So thank you so much. Thank thank you so much, Sebastian. Thank you. Wonderful. Thanks. Hey guys, I really hope you enjoyed that episode. You know, it takes a lot to put these things together, but I truly love doing it. If you enjoyed this episode or the show in general, and you listen to it on audio podcasts, please take some time to give it a review. It would really mean a lot to me. And if you watch the video, please go ahead and just click subscribe and share it with somebody that you think would like it would really mean the world to me and it helps keep the show alive. Visit SebastianNom.com for more content and follow me on Instagram at SebNom. That's S-E-B-N-A-U-M. Thanks again for spending your time with me. I know it is valuable. I hope you have a great rest of the day and week. Till next time.